So I want to introduce to you first uh, Sasha Rabin. And Sasha fell in love with natural building in 2002 when she began her building career with an apprenticeship at the Cobb Cottage Company. Art, by the way, is going to help me um, flip the PowerPoints. This is computer, and he knows that's to his tech. I feel like I have a celebrity computer tech today. <laughs> Since then, Sasha has taught extensively through organizations that she co-founded, Seven Generations Natural Builders and Vertical Clay, and through collaborations with the Yestermorrow Design Build School, the Canelo Project, Cal Earth, the Solar Living Institute, and Quail Springs Permaculture. Teaching natural building has brought her as far as the Permaculture Research Institute, PRI Jordan, and PRI Kenya. She currently lives in the Southern California high desert of Quail Springs and runs her own natural building organization, Earth and Shelter. And although she enjoys the acts of building, her true passions lie in the teaching and sharing of natural building with others. Sasha was drawn to natural building due to her interest in the impact that shelter has on our lives and what it means to live in beautifully created homes of natural, non-toxic materials. Sasha? Thanks, Ray. So like Ray said, I um, live and work out at Quail Springs. How many of you guys in this room have been out to Quail Springs before? Okay, looks like most of you. Um, great. We are just up to 33 on the other side of the mountains there, and we've been around as an organization up there for about 17 years now, um, mostly doing educational programming, promoting doing nature connection, um, variety of programming. Um, and we are currently working to um, help bring earthen building and natural building more, in, more accessibility into the mainstream. So this is an example here of some earthquake test walls we've been doing in collaboration with Cal Poly and Art Ludwig. Um, basically addressing the fact that the main stumbling block right now to bring these materials more into the forefront and make them more accessible to more people, especially in more urban areas, um, is not having numbers for earthquake and for fire testing. So we um, have decided to, to sort of shift some of our focus that direction. So I'll share more on that in a little bit, but we hope to do the actual testing in the next couple weeks. But meanwhile, we have these four walls here that have been drying now for six months and they're all built with different amounts of reinforcement in them as well as one that's just standard cob wall. Um, Are you talking about the stuff inside triangle? Yes, sorry, these walls. We've had a little rain so we're trying to keep them dry. But I was gonna back up a minute here and just sort of broaden our perspective and start with a, a slightly larger um, overview of earthen building around the world. So this is probably the largest earthen building in the world. It's in Mali. It's around 26,000 square feet, um, built around 1906. I like this one because it's a housing development. It's a 36 duplexes built in 1780, all out of Cobb in England. So this is the, the sort of tradition, the main tradition that we borrow from. This is the main type of building that we refer to when we talk about Cobb. This is, this is where it comes from. This is a real classic Cobb building from Devon. A lot of these buildings are four, five, six hundred years old. Of course, our local longest continually inhabited buildings in North America, in the Taos Pueblo in New Mexico. All earthen buildings. Um, jumping over to China, another style of earthen buildings there, um, built in a different, a different shape, more for, the, um, for uh, defense purposes. So just, just to share a little of the, the spectrum from all over the world that um, earthen building is utilized and it's still to this day 
is the most common building material on the planet. So I think that that's helpful in sort of setting some context for, um, for these things. And here we are in the Cuyama Valley, just over the mountain. This is um, a project we did at the Family Resource Center. Um, one of the really wonderful things about these building materials is how safe they are to work with with kids, um, with little ones, and how empowering and how fun that is for, for kids to, to jump in and play with these materials and be able to actually be part of the building process. Um, it really changes things. And elders as well. Um, we often mix everything with our hands and our feet, so there's no loud equipment, so it really changes the, you know, dynamic on the work site quite profoundly. Um, yeah. So also very conducive to just people getting together and working together really changes the dynamic there as well. Um, you, it necessitates people coming together and helping you. Um, just have a handful of slides of some finished photos for those of you who have never, never been in or experienced earthen buildings. Um, this is a small cob cottage. It's an earthen wall just in a more mainstream traditional house or, um, or conventional, as um, Ray was saying. Um, just ways that these materials can be used in conjunction with more conventional materials as well. A lot of benches and outdoor um, walls, garden walls, windows, sitting areas. It's a traditional technique that we learned from a um, man in India and some friends brought back. Most of the materials that are used are um, in, tend to be used locally from the site which makes it so you can have a very direct feedback loop for the impact that your harvesting and gathering of materials is having, which is a very you know, important piece. Um, fire. We know that these materials don't burn, um, but one of the next, one of the stumbling blocks for um, especially using these materials in more urban areas is um, doing some fire testing on these. So that's sort of one of our next, um, next likely steps as far as research go. The earthquake walls that we're doing are, are one of those stumbling blocks and one of those um, pieces of data that are needed. One of the other pieces of data that are needed is to do um, fire, fire testing on these materials. Um, we're looking at hopefully sometime in the next year going to Texas and building a, a earthen wall there will they get, that will get tested in a facility to, um, to actually get some, some numbers on the fire rating, even though we're, we're, we're pretty confident that it's not gonna, that it's not gonna catch on fire. Um, just having the numbers is, um, is what's needed. Here's just a little cob cabin that I built up in Middleton that survived the valley fire up there and on all four sides around this cabin, all the, the houses burned and it was just left standing up on the hill. Um, a couple permitted cob houses, um, just that it has been done, and maybe just to add on to what Ray was saying, there actually are some counties that have earthen building in their codes, mostly in the southwest. Um, so there are, there are some groundwork laid for us to, to build off of there, and there are a handful of buildings that have been permitted in more recent years. Um, this building that was built in Berkeley this past year, I believe that it's 121 square feet. They could have done it for 100, 120 square feet and not done the permit, but they wanted to, to, to go through that process. And yeah, time for questions later. Thank you.